everyone it's rachel back with you i hope y'all are having an absolutely amazing week but hey it's thursday we have some football to talk about now this week here this week here is a week unlike any other um the schedule for this week it's a little wonky because sunday is christmas day for those of you that celebrate christmas Sunday is Christmas Day, so that has a lion's share of the games this week on Saturday. So that's going to be interesting. It sucks for me that has to work on Saturday, but hey, it's fine. It'll be fine. We'll make it through it. So Thursday night football, we are featuring the Red Hot Jacksonville Jaguars versus the New York Jets. The Jacksonville Jaguars had that upset over the Dallas Cowboys last week where the Jets lost to the Detroit Lions. Now, in this game here, Trevor Lawrence is going to look to continue on that role and he's going to be going up against Zach Wilson. That's right, Zach Wilson is starting for a second consecutive week because my, um, Mike White is still dealing with some fractured ribs. So Mike White is not going to be under center for the New York Jets. Um, on top of that, the, Jet, the Jets defense, I believe they're still going to be without Quentin Williams, which is a big, big, big loss um, considering, you know, the man's a pro bowler. Um, so this game here, excuse me, this game here, I've got to give it to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I just feel like they are getting hot at the right time where the Jets are kind of cooling off at the wrong time, um, partially be because of injuries and items of that sort. Then that's going to lead us to the Sunday slate of games. The Sunday slate of games, we're going to start off with Buffalo versus Chicago. Now in this game, you have one of the best teams in the AFC versus one of the worst teams in the NFC. That being said, this one's pretty obvious. It's going to go to the Buffalo Bills. Now, we have the New Orleans Saints versus the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland has looked, you know, Deshaun Watson's getting better. I do not like Deshaun Watson. We've already discussed this. Um, but Deshaun Watson is looking better. He's shaking that rust off a little bit. Um, and, you know, the Cleveland Browns, they're picking up at the right time, unfortunately for me. Um, so this game here, I'm going to give it to the Cleveland Browns. Then we have the Houston Texans versus the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Tennessee Titans are going to be without Ryan Tannehill. Um, so that's going to have the rookie Malik Willis getting the start. Now, that Titans offense looks very, very, very different with Malik Willis. Malik Willis is not the passer that Ryan Tannehill is. Malik, Malik Willis has more mobility than Ryan Tannehill does, though, however... My big question here, is it going to be enough? Obviously, the Texans record speaks for itself. The Houston Texans, they are having a down year. But in back-to-back -back weeks, the Texans have taken the Cowboys and the Chiefs, two playoff teams, literally to the brink of death, and then lost it at the very end. Now, the Cowboys, the Chiefs, they are both far superior teams to the Tennessee Titans. But still, I can't I can't get behind Houston with that record. I just can't. Um, so this game here, I'm going to give it to the Tennessee Titans. I think it's a trap game, but I'm giving it to the Tennessee Titans. Now, speaking of those Kansas City Chiefs, they are going to be playing the Seattle Seahawks this week. Geno Smith, in his 10th year as a pro NFL player has made the Pro Bowl. Like, what a story for Geno Smith. Um, that is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. He is in a playoff hunt looking for that wild card spot. But this week here, he's got a tough opponent in Kansas City. This one here, it is going to the Chiefs. Speaking of that NFC wild card spot, we have got the New York Giants, who currently hold one of those spots versus the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Minnesota, goodness, we, um, it's been an up and down year. They're hot and they're cold, but 
Honestly, I think with the New York Giants, the New York Giants are losing steam. Yes, they beat Washington this last week, but I still think they're a team that's on a downward trend. That being said, their last three games, that schedule is kind of daunting. Um, and it starts here with Minnesota. This game here, I'm going to give them the L against Minnesota. Minnesota is going to win this game. And then we have the Cincinnati Bengals versus the New England Patriots. Y'all, the Cincinnati Bengals, they have looked very, very good. That offensive line is really gelling together. Joe Mixon and Samaji P. Ryan are making a very good one-two punch in that backfield. Let's not forget Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Like, that is one of the best wide receiving trios in the NFL. That defense is no slouch either. Honestly, I don't think anyone wants to play the Cincinnati Bengals right now. The Cincinnati Bengals are one of my top teams in the league, and for that reason, I'm giving them the win here. Now, we have the Detroit Lions versus the Carolina Panthers. Carolina is going to be wheeling out Sam Darnold as their starting quarterback. Um, Sam Darnold, let's see, I think he's 2-1 and one as a starter this year after having lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers last week. Um, this game here, like, Detroit is favored, but I feel like it is a trap game for Detroit. Like, this is the game that has me nervous. I feel like Detroit could easily overlook um, the Carolina Panthers, even though it seems like they're very focused on getting that last wild card spot, taking it one game at a time. That being said, Detroit has been red hot lately. Um, I mean, shoot, they beat the Minnesota Vikings, which I did not expect. Then they go in and they beat the New York Jets, which again, I did not expect. Granted, was I rooting for Detroit? Heavens yes. Did I see it coming? Heavens no. And honestly, that's what I'm going with this week as well. Detroit is going to get that W. I'm worried it's a trap game. Absolutely, I am. But I believe in Detroit. I believe in Dan Campbell. And I think the Lions are going to pull this one off. And then we have the Atlanta Falcons versus the Baltimore Ravens. Now, y'all, Desmond Ritter got his first start last week, and he... It was rough. We'll say that. It was rough. I'm going to put it nicely when I say that. Um, but I think a large part of it has to do with Marcus Mariota not being there to mentor him. And I think that is an absolutely unprofessional move of Marcus Mariota. Yes, I know getting bench sucks. Getting bench sucks, especially while you're still in the playoff race. Um, I think, you know, that absolutely sucks for Mariota, but... Bro, like, you're getting paid to be a professional sports player and you're walking out on your team like that. Like, bro, I can't, I can't, I can't get behind that. Um, that being said, we have a quarterback who's literally trying to learn on the fly versus the Baltimore Ravens. That defense is no joke. So this game here, I'm giving it to the Baltimore Ravens. It sounds like Lamar Jackson might be back under center. Um, which is just going to tip the scale even more into Baltimore's favor. Then we have the Washington Commanders versus the San Francisco 49ers. Y'all, Brock Purdy, Iowa State's own Brock Purdy is looking like the real deal. Mr. Irrelevant is relevant. Um, even with, um, even without... Debo Samuel, he's still getting W's. Um, fun fact, tight end George Kittle went to the University of Iowa. Brock Purdy went to Iowa State University. The Sunday night football game where, um, where Brock Purdy threw a touchdown pass to George Kittle was the first time in NFL history that someone from Iowa State University threw a touchdown pass to a player from the University of Iowa in NFL history, or vice versa. That has literally never happened that the two rival schools in the state of Iowa combined for a touchdown in the NFL. I thought that was cool. I thought that was a nice little fun fact for you. Um, but hey, 
on top of that, we still have um, Christian McCaffrey on the 49ers. We still have that 49ers defense complete with um, complete with Bosa. That is looking like an absolute unit. This team here, they are a very, very, very dangerous team in the NFC. I think they're one of the most dangerous teams in the NFC this year. And they are getting the W here, beating Washington. Then we have Philly versus Dallas. Big time rivalry game. It is sounding very, very much like Jalen Hurts is not going to play in this game. Jalen Hurts is dealing with a separated shoulder. I know as a quarterback, that's got to be a big, big, big kicker. Um, now, Philly has a playoff spot on lock, obviously. Um, but they do not have the division nor home field advantage in that in those playoffs on lock yet. So this game still has a lot of meaning. Philly is going to be starting Gardner Minshew. Now, I absolutely love Gardner Minshew. I think Minshew mania is so real in Philly. Just the confidence, the moxie, the poise that dude has is next level. It's kind of the Brock Purdy approach, considering we were just talking about San Francisco. Brock is not the most talented player on the field. Gardner, not the most talented player on the field. But the confidence and the leadership that he has on that team can drive them forward. Mike White, another great example of this. It is the poise, it is the confidence, and it is that moxie. And that Dallas Cowboys defense is no joke, led by Micah Parsons and um, Trevon Diggs. But I'm going with Philly. Like, between Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown, along with um, Miles Sanders in the backfield, we're going to have Dallas Goddard back. And then Minshew Mania, I think the Philadelphia Eagles are getting this W. But this game here, easily our game of the week. And then we have the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Kenny Pickett back under center for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Darren Waller back in uniform for the Raiders. Raiders obviously won last week on that clutch play at the end, on that lateral um, that lateral play at the end from the Patriots that was intercepted or fumbled, I guess, whatever, however you would rule that, by Chandler Jones and returned for a touchdown. Now, this game here, I don't know. It was kind of like my toilet bowl game of the week. I didn't really know who to pick in this one. But what it came down to for me was I don't know who's going to match up against Darren Waller, against Devontae Adams, and Hunter Renfro. Not to mention Josh Jacobs is probably the best running back in the league this season. So Vegas has a lot going for him. So this game here, I chose to give it to Vegas. And then we have the Green Bay Packers versus the Miami Dolphins. We're into Sunday's games now. Green Bay and Miami lead off our Christmas Day games. Now this game here... Green Bay is on a struggle bus. They're picking it up. I mean, they Rodgers has finally got, you know, that chemistry going with his receivers. But Miami's an absolute unit. Tua Tonga Viola's playing like a stud. Um, Tyree Kill is Tyree Kill. Like, he is the cheetah for a reason. On the other end of the field, you've got the Penguin and Jalen Waddle. They are a dynamic one-two punch. Like, holy heavens, they are a dynamic one-two punch. On defense, I mean, shoot, you've got um, two stud corners, you've got ball hawking safeties, you've got a very talented defensive line. Like, Miami is one of my sleeper teams in the playoffs. They're not, you know, like the popular consensus picks, Kansas City um, and Buffalo. But I think Miami right there with Cincinnati is one of those sleeper picks that could come up and just bite you in the tush if you're not careful. This game here... Miami Dolphins. And then we have the Denver Broncos versus the LA Rams. So we have got Russell Wilson versus Baker Mayfield. Now, that Denver defense is legit. Russell has struggled mightily. Um, on the other end of the ball, Baker Mayfield has looked very good in a Rams uniform, but those Rams are a are like a hospital ward. Those Rams are injured. 
constantly. Um, so this one's tough to pick, but I'm picking the Denver Broncos. I think the Broncos defense is going to propel them to that W um, just because like that Rams wide receiving core, we're talking like most teams fourth and fifth string receiver because it's all I got left. Like there's no other options here. Um, and then we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Arizona Cardinals. Now in Arizona, we don't have Kyler Murray. We don't have Colt McCoy. Our starting quarterback is Trace McSorley. Now you've got Trace McSorley versus Tom Brady. I mean, both teams that defensive, the defensive side of the ball doesn't really get me too excited. Um, offensive side of the ball, Mike Evans, Charles Godwin versus, um, versus Hollywood Brown and um, D-Hop, very evenly matched. Um, in the backfield, you've got Rashad White, you've got James Conner. I'd say relatively evenly matched. Rashad White might be a little bit better on that front. Um, you've got Cade Otten. You've got Zach Ertz. Like, um, this game here, though, it comes down to the quarterback play. I'm going to give this one to Tom Brady and those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then that's going to bring us to Monday Night Football. We have got the Indianapolis Colts versus the LA Chargers. Yes. We have a Colts versus Bolts matchup. Um, Jeff Saturday just announced that the Colts are going to be starting Nick Foles at quarterback. So not Matt Ryan, not Sam Ellinger, not Matt Ryan again, but Nick Foles. Y'all, that is the fourth starting quarterback or the fourth quarterback move we've had this year in Indianapolis. That's not good. <laughs> Meanwhile... The Bolts, the L.A. Chargers, have looked very good as long as Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are in the lineup. And it sounds like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be in the lineup. That being said, the Chargers get this W on Monday Night Football. I don't really think it's going to be close, um, but that's my take on it. So, my friends, that is this week's slate of games. Um... I know this video is running long because I get long-winded when I talk about football. But I hope y'all have a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. I hope it is phenomenal for you. And I will catch you all on the flip side next week, okay? All right, my friends. Talk to you soon. I love you. Goodbye.